I have to document this. <laughs> I have reached another phase of successfulness regarding ICU and saving rootless orchids. I don't know how long this success phase will last, so I just want to document this and I appreciate that you joined me here to have a look-see as to how far I've gotten so far with the Doria Teonopsis purple gem Aida and my Phalaenopsis little freckles that was a gift. But let's have a look because first of all, you can see that I have them in like, you know, the cut-off water bottles, sauna kind of setup here, keep the humidity in. I have Lekka on the bottom and because this one is so short, I don't have the dome on it because I didn't want to affect the leaves. So I put some cling film on it, which I hope doesn't blow away in the wind now. But let's have a look-see. This is my little freckles, or what's left of it. A gift from my daughter. It was such a cute orchid, so many blooms. And then I went and did this to it. It just completely declined. And you can see here, the scale on the orchid, right there. Look at that. So I'll take care of that. There's another one. Right by a growth or something that's trying to grow there. You can see there's something trying to grow there. Uh -huh. The attempts of a root, yes, and there's something trying to grow there. This, I have been trying to rescue it for wow, eight months now. It never took to semi-hydro. It never adapted when I transplanted it. It just completely, well, deteriorated, as you can see. So what I have left is a little bit of a stump and I'm going to now get some alcohol and we're going to take care of that and I'm going to brush away some of the nasty down here. I'll be right back. I'm just going to spray it with some hydrogen peroxide. The idea is to see if I can do, follow the instructions as per Danielle's Orchid Ranch and successfully try and save an orchid that I made go downhill. I have an 80% success rate when it comes to transitioning Phalaenopsis into semi-hydro. And the ones that have successfully transitioned stay weak for approximately a year. And they don't, I don't let them bloom but then suddenly they take off. I've had about 20% of my Phalaenopsis just jump into semi-hydro, no questions asked. It's like they've lived there all their lives. And this was one of the ones that said, I'm not having it. And I'm of the mindset that once I've transitioned an orchid or done the new setup, I don't mess with the orchid anymore because I think it adds more stress. Well, good and bad, yes and no. And it's up to individual judgment as to whether it's something that you can do or not do. Sometimes I don't have the nerve, but I stick, I stick to my guns. So I'm not going to affect whatever little growing point is there. Just gonna try and keep this stem a little bit cleaner now that we've got it out and free of the gunk. So that's all I'm gonna do now. I don't wanna get ahead of myself here. One more spray with hydrogen peroxide. And let's hope that we killed the eggs where the scale was right here. Sorry, there we go. And then see what happens. So that is my little no ID phalaenopsis. Little freckles. 
trying and I hope I can help it along with whatever it's trying to do. When we get that little cling film back on there. So that was the worst of them all. Let me show you now the ones that look a little bit more pr promising. So this is Doria Ternopsis, Purple Gemmaida, doing absolutely brilliantly for two years in my collection. And it was living next to another orchid called Unicorn that has mean, in the meantime gone elsewhere. And it got the same scale as did the Unicorn. And you can see Amelieberg is trying to manifest itself. That's not going to happen. I'll take some alcohol on a paintbrush and get rid of that. There we go. But this piece, as you can see, we're getting some root growth. I would like to keep that up. I only have wet leca in here. I don't have the stem touching water. And when I fill up, I only fill up so that the little crevices on the bottom of that bottle actually get filled with water. So my Aida was doing really well and it grew two plantlets at the beginning of this year. And I was super pleased until it started to go downhill. So here's the second piece and it's also growing roots. So this is one of the roots that I could save and it's still not died on me yet. That's promising. Normally by now they've all deteriorated. And the stump here is extending, trying to. And there are some new roots coming out. And I have it in the same setup as the other piece. So this will be the last time I take it out because I don't want to disturb that one root tip there. The one that's actually touching the leka. I want to keep that as maintained and humid as possible. So I have two chances to make it happen. But this is the first time that I'm actually seeing roots and I haven't lost the orchid. My unicorn, I got the roots starting and then that was it for the orchid. There was nothing left, no more energy in her at all. And these, everybody here lives under the sort of protected area of the shop lights, not directly underneath, but very close to a lot of bright light. And I barely, barely move them. So I just open up the dome, add a little bit more water, and then shut the dome again. I don't want to move them because those root tips, they could just stop growing with every kind of little abrasion and movement. Now, not really ICU, but you know, if it's green, don't throw it away. Recently, I repotted my Lelia zip and I took the end off and I wanted to see if anything would happen to this back part of the orchid. There was something like here that looks like it could be an eye, but it's not as green as it was as when I took off these little bulbs. There's so little energy in them. I don't know if there's any any energy left to create anything, but you know, you just give it a go. It's not in the way. And in this case, I have it on hob material that I use for my mounts. These are the scraps. And again, the water is just to here. It shouldn't be touching the rhizome. It's just there to create a little bit of humidity around the base of that rhizome and that little node and we'll see what happens. And here is my back end of the Lelia perinii. I did end up keeping it. It's not happy at all. Not at all. Also on the hob material, there's water down in the bottom. These roots were dead anyway, so they are not 
doing much except providing some humidity. But you can see how the pseudobulb is already doing the yoga thing here. Not straight, not upright anymore. I don't have any eyes on this piece back here. Oh, hang on a second. Let me correct that. I have two things that could possibly develop into something, but you know, with Perinari, you never really know because the bulbs are not really big storage organs. So there's not much energy in this orchid at all, even though it looks like I have five back bulbs. But we'll have to wait and see. Again, it's not in the way. It just sits in this container, cut off bottle thing with water and just at the bottom there, keeping the base area humid. But these guys with the roots, it's the furthest I have ever, ever gotten with regards to trying to bring back an orchid that was on the brink. So I'm going to put them back in the place where they belong and I'm not going to move them again until they need some more replenishing of the water at the bottom. I really would like to see if I can for once rescue a Phalaenopsis or a Phalaenopsis type. That's my quick update. Still learning, still trying to copy Danielle. Yeah, I'm not a very good student after all these years and her, she explains things so, so well. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm listening. I am listening, but we'll see what happens next. Quick update, appreciate the fact that you came and had a quick look-see with me. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Stay safe, take care. Bye.